Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Mastermind Minutes. My name is Gary Grosso. I am the managing partner of Franchise Growth Solutions, and you all know by now that's this big sign in back of me. You can uh, click the link above or below, depending on the platform you're watching or listening on, and uh, find out about Franchise Growth Solutions. For those of you joining us for the first time, first of all, welcome, and we're happy to have you to the party, which has now grown to about 80,000. So we're excited about that. Uh, Mastermind Minutes is the webcast slash podcast now, uh, also available on Spotify and Apple, doing my little promos here, uh, nice. that uh, covers a topic, generally one topic, uh, with one expert guest. And uh, we accomplish that in minutes, not hours. We realize it's, uh, it's a tease for sure. Uh, but at the end of the program, we will give you the contact information of our guest, and then you can feel free to reach out and get more details on the topic. And today, my guest, and he's a returning guest, uh, is Michael Iannuzzi, and he is, um, well, he's, a, he's an associate and become a friend over, over the years. Um, he works as a partner and co-leader in Citroen Cooperman's franchise practice, uh, providing audit and accounting, business consulting, and advisory services uh, to the franchise community. Uh, he works with franchisors and multi-unit franchisees in a variety of industries, uh, including, uh, but not limited to, because I know he covers a, a lot of bases here, fitness, athletic centers, children entertainment services, and of course, QSR, which is the pool that, uh, that I play in. And um, he's got some really important information for us today. So, Michael, first of all, thank you so much for being with us again today. How are you? Gary, I'm doing well, as always. Thank, thank you again for having me on here. I really appreciate the platform and you reaching out and, you know, allowing us to share some information that we, we hope is useful to your, to your audience. Yep, yep. Well, I know it'll be useful. That's, that's for sure. So, um, you want to just give us, uh, for the folks who, who may not be familiar with Citroen Cooperman and what you do, you sure. want to give us just a little background on your firm and then we can get into the topic for today. Sure. sure. So Citroen Cooperman is a full service accounting, audit, tax and consulting firm. We have offices up and down the East Coast, about 1,200 to 1,300 professionals between all the offices. As you mentioned earlier, I co-lead the franchise practice. So on our side, in my group, we work with franchisors, multi-unit franchisees. We do all the audit work that goes into the, uh, for the financial statement that goes into the annual FDD, Franchise Disclosure Document Filing. A lot of tax planning, salt, state and local work. Uh, a lot of due diligence for mergers and acquisitions for private equity looking to buy or sell franchise concepts. And um, at the end of the day, we do a lot of um, consulting work, which is operational and a lot of talking to our franchisors and franchisees just about franchising in general, um, you know, different trends that we see and, you know, important topics that are coming up, which I think is what ultimately the uh, genesis of this uh, webcast is going to be. Yep. Yep. And, and, and thank you for the, uh, for the, for the, the background and the update. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, what I'd like to talk about today, and you and I talked about it earlier before we, we started the broadcast, um, for those of you uh, in, in the IFA and in the franchising business, you know that each year, I guess in September, the Franchise Action Committee uh, meets in D.C. This year it happened in July. Yeah. And uh, they cover a lot of topics and they stand up and they're really advocates for the franchise industry as it relates to policy and lawmaking that's coming down from D.C. that could either help us or hurt us in this business. Right. Uh, Michael, so you were you were part of that this year. Um, what I guess I'd like to know is what, you know, what are the, you know, what are the headlines? What were the hot topics uh, this year uh, at the at the Action Committee? Sure, sure. So, yeah, so Gary, like you said, every year, which is usually in September, the International Franchise Association and its members, the suppliers, franchisors, and franchisees, you know, literally used to fly into Washington. And based on, you know, the region that you lived in, you would have in-person meetings with your state and local representatives. And every year, the IFA would lobby for certain changes. And in the past, things like joint employer laws, you know, were, were a very big topic that the IFA would lobby on. This year, and you know, unfortunately due to COVID, the fly-in for September was canceled. However, it got moved to July with a uh, conference call webinar based setup where your same groups got to meet with your local representatives, but instead of being there in person, we did this through conference call and, and some, some people had webinars, I believe. All of mine were, were conference calls. 
So what, what the goal of this was is to, you know, since we were doing this in July, the IFA has a number of topics that they're pushing for small business. And keep in mind, even though, you know, you and I are talking franchising, a lot of these bills cross small business in general. You know, anybody who took a PPP loan, doesn't matter if you're a franchisor, or franchisee, or just a regular business, these bills are going to help promote you. So what we would encourage is, and we'll, we'll speak about this again at the end, is please go to the IFA website, franchise.org, and look up the Franchise Action Network, where you will find a lot of this information posted on their site, and it will give you instructions on how to reach out to your local representatives to ask for support for these bills. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the current bills that are going on right now into two different buckets. The first one is more of a liquidity sort of situation, which is building on the backs of you know, the PPP loans and some of the other loans that are out there. The second section are tax credits that are being proposed by the IFA. And right now, a lot of this stuff is fluid. So you know, I, don't, I don't know right now if anything is going to pass, what the status is. I mean, I'm sure everybody sees what's going on in, in Washington and you know, the members of Congress and the House looking to go back uh, to the negotiating table. Well, so when you, uh, if I could just jump in, once yeah, those fees are passed, whichever is passed, we'll have you back on to kind of yeah. give us the follow up. By the way, when you say everyone knows what's going on in Washington, in my world, that's like nothing. <laughs> Nothing's getting <laughs> done in Washington. Anyway, go go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. So let, <laughs> let's do the uh, the liquidity ones first, and th these are specific bills. So I'm I'm going to read these bills. So you know, you, you know exactly what they are, what the names are, and you can research them yourselves, or when you reach out to your local members of Congress, you'll have the bills in front of you. So the first one is the Paycheck Protection Small Business Forgiveness Act. This will streamline the forgiveness of the PPP loans for small business. So some of the things that I'm hearing is maybe automatic forgiveness up to a certain amount, simplified application, just a letter saying you're applying for forgiveness and that's it. So we'll see how this plays out. That would be very beneficial to cut down on all the paperwork that a lot of small businesses would have to file when they're busy trying to run their business. Yeah. The second one is the Prioritized Paycheck Protection Program, or P4 Act. This would provide additional PPP funding for hard-hit small businesses with 100 employees or less. And I believe the PPP applications closed a week or two ago with money left over. So hopefully this gets revised and people can access those, those funds. Uh, the third one, the Relief from Main Street Act. This would complement the federal relief efforts to small business through state and local emergency funding. So my guess here is, or my take is, they would allow certain funds to go into the state and local levels where businesses in those regions could access these programs. Uh, the last one on the liquidity term is uh, the Restart Act. This would provide long-term low interest loans to small and medium-sized businesses. So th these are the four liquidity ones that the IFA is pushing right now. All of them or some of them would be beneficial. You know, we'll see, we'll see how, that, how this piece plays out. Okay, so I, I think, look, there's enough there. Certainly, um, you know, I think the payroll protection and the forgiveness is, is a big, big issue for small yeah. business people because, you know, a lot of the folks that I know who are running small businesses, they're, you know, they're working twice as hard for half the money. Half the, money. the last yeah. thing they need to do is spend hours filling out forms and then, you know, you know how that goes. You didn't fill yep. something out right, and you either have to do it, or you missed a deadline, or you almost disqualify yourself just because you know you're not. not you yeah. know, so so I think that that's 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 key. What were some of the other uh, takeaways from the uh, from the meeting that you think are important? Again, not sure. just for the franchise business, uh, but things sure. that are maybe in the works that. And, and, and by the way, is there a timeline on when Congress is supposed to take this up? Because it seems like everybody's on vacation except us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your, your guess there is as, as good as mine. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, like, like, again, the, the IFA is, is constantly pushing for these, and they're constantly lobbying in Washington. Your, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, because correct me if I'm wrong, and I may be wrong. Uh, but the original deadline on the forgiveness was October 31, correct? That's when you had to apply for forgiveness. So if I think about that, 
it's um, now the last week in August. That's about eight weeks away, maybe nine. Um, we've got an election between now and then, which means people in Washington are going to be sidetracked with the I love this guy, I hate that guy, okay? So is, I w is there some anticipation? And again, you may not know, but is there some anticipation that the forgiveness part, because I think that's the piece that's really, really important. Is that going right. to happen before the deadline? And if it doesn't, what happens? Uh, do, yeah. you, do we pass the deadline and then you can go back and re I mean, it just seems like such a mess. Yeah, I, I don't know. All I know is that I've seen, re not recently, but everybody probably saw the original forgiveness yes. application, which was pages along. Then a few weeks later, a shortened version came out. So there is some progress going on hopefully this is now this is what pushes it over the top and gives you automatic forgiveness which is what everybody wants and deserves yeah yeah and i i, I don't disagree the, the second thing that you mentioned and again i'm going to kind of put it into non-accounting terms non-accountants terms because i'm yeah, not yeah. but it sounds like there's going to be a second round available of ppp either for the money that's left in that tr in that trough right now or and i guess this is a secondary piece to it or they're adding new money to it did i hear that correctly yeah so that that would be part of some of these bills here so the um the the second one which was the prioritize paycheck protection program act which is definitely a, a mouthful mm -hmm. this would provide additional ppp funding for people with 100 employees or less so my take is maybe they want to access the money that's left over still, and at least extend that. So whatever funds were already allocated could be used up uh, since, the, the, since the deadline has passed for new PPP applications. Right, right, and that sounds like all they would be doing there is extending the deadline as opposed to saying, hey, we're gonna refund, you know, we're gonna recapitalize yeah. this with more you know, printed money, and we're gonna throw this in here and people can kind of come in for a second bite of the apple, which yeah. again, you know, I think would be, uh, from my point of view, I, I realize the first one was fast and furious, as they say. But if there's a, if if they're funding this again and people are coming back, I think this time there needs to be a little bit more scrutiny because, uh, let's face it, in March and April we were all, you know, unsure what was happening. But now, even though there's still a lack of certainty, I think I think kind of the 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 the, the day to day business. Not, not to not to imply that people aren't still suffering, please. I don't want anyone yeah. to get the wrong idea. But but business has come back. People have kind of fallen into you know a new routine. It's not like people are wondering, hey, can I keep my restaurant open? You know, the answer is yes. Some people are actually even doing better than they were pre-pandemic. Right. So I think there needs to be a little bit more scrutiny, not because it, it appeared, and again, maybe I'm wrong, but it appeared back in April, March, April that anyone who applied just like automatically got money. And, and I'm okay with that. But this time I think we need to look at it a little bit more closely. What, what are your thoughts on, on that? Yeah. Part? Well, look, look in my, in my home state alone, right? So today in Newsday, look in New York, uh, it looks like gyms are now going to get the opportunity to open uh, starting August 24th and bowling alleys opened, I believe yesterday. So back in April, May, when nobody knew, how long this was going to last if those gyms took out ppp money thinking they'd be open by june and they paid all those people to stay home that money's gone right. so now they're getting the green light to open in august so they need working capital to get their doors open i mean they've been closed for what with five five straight five yeah, straight months yeah yeah it's it's painful so yeah they're going to need something to bring all those people back because they would have exhausted the first round of PPP funds that they got. Exactly, exactly. So that that we want to watch. And then the, I think the third piece that you mentioned here was, if you if I recall, you you called it the restart uh, program. Is that? Um, and you mentioned something about the states. So up to yeah. this point, a lot of these kind of relief packages and help packages have been, you know, it's basically the Fed directing and printing money and distributing this. But I heard you mention the states. So is there some thought that the states are now going to get involved on some level with a program? Can you just maybe give us a little bit more meat yep. on that bone? Yeah, that, that's what the Main Street Act seems to imply, is that this is going to complement federal relief efforts and you know through state and local emergency grants. So I do know that certain states have programs like this in place where you can 
you know, get a local grant because in our market, these businesses couldn't open. So perhaps the federal government will fund some of this and give it to the states. Um, this, this one's a little broad, so we'll see how these, how these play out. And, with, and the last one, which you mentioned, was the Restart Act, which would provide additional funding. So maybe these are going to be 20-year loans, 10-year loans. We'll, we'll see how, you know, how this you know, comes, to, comes to be. Right, right. So I guess just to kind of wrap it up then, what I want to say is uh, I just want to emphasize that everything that Michael just said is, you know, in consideration right now. None of this yeah. stuff has been passed. Yes. Uh, obviously, five minutes after this broadcast ends, everything has changed. <laughs> um, so I think, I think we need to be cognizant of that. And, uh, and, and that's why, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you stay close, especially in this times, you stay close to your accountants and financial advisors. And um, that should be the folks over at Citroen Cooperman, uh, yep. in my opinion. Michael, is there anything you want to want to leave us with before I ask you for contact information? Any last sure. thoughts on this that you can share with us? Yeah, let me cover, and I'll, I'll be quick on it, the, the other three bills that were also proposed oh, okay. uh, during those clients. Great. So, these are these are more tax credit focused where the ifa is pushing for certain credits for uh companies that if they bring workers back in a certain way if they do it safely that they'll get uh you know tax credits for some of these expenses incurred so the first one and these are all very long wordy wordy bills is well, the jump about <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's the the jump starting our business success credit of 2020 this will enhance the employee retention credit, which will better ensure employer, employees can stay connected to the employers during the pandemic. So the last time you had me on, I actually touched on the employee retention credit. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna expand that credit. This is, then the next one is the clean start back to work tax credit. This will create a temporary tax credit to assist business owners who responsibly safeguard their workers while we reopen the economy. So maybe, uh, you know, they'll get a, a double up of the expenses they pay, you know, who knows. Uh, the last one is the Reopening America by Supporting Workers and Business Act. This will help local businesses rebuild their workforce, uh, rebuild their workforce by turning unemployment benefits into back to work bonuses. Mm -hmm. So instead of maybe getting the 400 to $600 unemployment check, you're going to come back to work, we'll give you some sort of credit bonus for coming back to work. Maybe that'll be credited to the employee, to the uh, company's tax return. This way they can bring you back to work. They'll give you a bonus. It's covered by a tax credit. Everybody wins as opposed to you staying home and collecting the unemployment benefit. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I, I agree because I think, uh, and uh, look, we've all heard stories about people who would just, you know, don't want to go back to work because they're making more money at home. And I, I know that that's sometimes just a... That's just a talking point. I'm sure it goes yeah. on, but I think people do want to go back to work. I think that there's some navigating that needs to get done in terms of how people are going to do that. I, I'm especially um, focused on, you know, folks who are, and, and I don't have this issue anymore. My, my daughter's 30 years old, but the folks who are kind of forced to homeschool their children, um, how do you homeschool and go back to work if you work at a physical plant where now you're, you're not working from home? Um, yeah, so I yeah. think that that's, that's seriously um, some issues there. So if there's some other measure of assistance or guidance, uh, I think that makes sense. The tax, the tax piece um, would appear to me, again, I'm not a, a tax accountant, is that these are things that are going to work for both um, the employer and the employee. It's not just like PPP is strictly the employer, but this sounds like it's a, a two-way street, and it and it and it also sounds that it's focused on getting people back to work and reopening. That that's the focus here. Am I am I hearing you and interpreting that correctly? Yeah, it would it would be mostly it would still focus on the company side, whereas they would get certain benefits for bringing people back, doing it safely by purchasing all the, uh, you know, the PPP, I'm sorry, the, <laughs> the, per the protection equipment, right. um, you know, face mask shields, you know, all the acronyms can, dr can drive you crazy, yeah, you, um, you know, by getting credits for making certain purchases and uh, ensuring that, not ensuring, but trying the best you can to make sure that your workforce is safe. And the last one, which would be some sort of benefit to the employee, for coming back to work as opposed to the uh, 
enhanced unemployment. And again, the, probably the company would pay that and receive some sort of credit that payment on their tax return. Right. So it's so it sounds like uh, from the employee's point of view, the two the two kind of uh, I guess overview benefits. One would be you know cash. Okay, right. that's always a benefit. Right. But the other one really is more um, psychological in the sense that the employee can feel perhaps more confident knowing that their employer has to live up to some certain measure of safety standards because the employer wants to get that credit. So the right. employer now is going to live up to, you know, those standards so that the workplace becomes a safer environment, thereby instilling confidence in the employee and kind of giving them more, more reason to go back to work. Right. So yeah, again, I mean, it seems like, we, the, um... uh, no, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, what were you going to say? I was going to build off of exactly what you were saying. I mean, look at all the times you pick food up or you go someplace. You see all the plexi, glass shields up, everybody in, in masks, new filtration systems. So the companies are spending a lot of money to do that. And so they, they should get some benefit for that spend. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I, I agree. I agree. You know, and again, I'm, I'm focused on small business. Um, that's not to say that larger companies don't have the same issues. I just think that their ability to access capital is far, far different than, you know, the person that owns the independent restaurant yeah. or the hair salon or, or whatever in your local community. I think that's just a whole different set of challenges that have to be addressed, um, you know, by, by state and, and, and federal government. So again, Michael, I, I, I can't thank you enough. Any, any parting words, uh, uh, that you want to give us. Otherwise, uh, I'll ask you to, to give us your contact information yeah. in case anyone wants to. Uh, wants yeah, to so again, yeah, so again, I'd encourage everybody to go to the, you know, franchise.org. Uh, they have tremendous amount of updates there and link over to the Franchise Action Network, which is part of that website and part of that organization uh, to follow these bills, follow the progress and updates that are going on. And if there's an opportunity for you to get involved, someplace locally in your local market, um, you'll see how to do that, you know, through these, through these two organizations. Great. Great. And, and as always, we will print, you know, we will, uh, there'll be text in, in the bottom of the, 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 the webcast or the podcast okay. uh, with your contact information, but why don't you just tell sure. us the best way people can reach you if they want to, if they want to email you or whatever now, what's, sure. what's the best way? So LinkedIn is great. You know, you can certainly look me up on LinkedIn and, you know, uh, make a connection request. I share a lot of information on there as well, so I can keep you updated that way. And my email is miannuzzi, I-M-I-A-N-N-U-Z-Z-I -N -N -Z -Z at citroencooperman.com. And uh, feel free to reach out um, or, you know, post, or you can go to our firm website, citroencooperman.com. We have a coronavirus page, which also gives updates on a lot of the bills that are going on. And if you sign up to any of the newsletters, you'll get lots of information as things come up and we know about it. We blast it out to the whole mailing list. All right. Great. Okay, great. Thank you, Michael. And, and again, thank you so much. And I am looking forward to having you back once some, sure. all, whatever happens with all of these proposals, once yeah. they, once they kind of get run through the pachinko machine, as I call it in DC, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll see um, how it, how it all plays out, but we'll definitely have you back to give us a little cool. bit more color on this. Cause I know people, the last time you were on folks had emailed me with more questions and you know, that this is a, this is vital and it's of interest to anyone running a small business, whether it's franchised or not. But yeah, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you Gary as always really, really appreciate it. And this is a great series you got going. Thank you. <laughs> great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Take it easy.